Welcome back Physics 30. This is FI 2.2 and FI 2.3. We're going to combine both of them together, the electric field and electric field lines. Um, so we'll look at the concept of electric field and determine the resulting electric field at a point some distance from two or more point charges. Determine the size or magnitude and direction of the electric force on a charge placed between or placed in an electric field and then sketch some of the patterns of what electric fields look like. So we looked at the forces between two charges. Now we look at, okay, what's kind of causing that force to happen? So many common forces might be referred to as contact forces, forces that involve pushing or pulling something, uh, such as a tennis racket hitting a tennis ball, etc. In contrast, both gravitational force and electric force act over a distance. Okay? There is a force between two objects, even when the objects are not touching. The idea of a force acting at a distance was difficult one time for early thinkers. Newton him, himself felt uneasy with the idea when he published his law of universal gravitation. A helpful way to look at the situation uses the idea of a field or a force field developed by British scientist Michael Faraday. In the electrical case, according to Faraday, an electric field extends outward from a charge and extends into all space as seen as this figure right here. If a second charge, call it Q2, is placed near the first charge, it feels a force. And then here I used, I guess I didn't use Q2, I used AP to represent the second charge. So if I place this little charge here next to this, it's going to experience either a force of attraction or repulsion, depending upon uh, what they, if they have a surplus or a deficit of electrons. So uh, the electric field at point P is considered to interact directly with the charge to produce the force on Q2. We can, in principle, investigate the electric field surrounding a charge or a group of charges by measuring the force on a small positive test charge. So we have to define the direction of a field in terms of either a negative charge or a positive charge. So it was classically defined in terms, what happens if I put a small positive charge in this region how, how big of a force does it feel, and specifically, what direction does it go? So by a test charge, we mean a charge so small that the force it exerts does not significantly affect the charges that it create the field. So it's not going to manipulate this field itself. It's just simply going to experience what happens when placed there. So for example, it's very much like a box compared to Earth. The box is going to experience what's happening uh, due to Earth's gravitational field on it. And the box will have little effect on the Earth. Same thing here. So if a tiny positive test charge, call it little q, is placed at various locations in the vicinity of a single positive charge, as shown, such as down in this diagram, uh, we can see that if I place it here, it's going to be repelled to the right. If I place it here, it's going to be moved up. If I place it here, it's going to be removed here. So because... A, B, and C represent regions in which I place a small positive test charge. I can infer that Q must be positive as well because it wants to be repelled in each of those locations. In each case, the, Q, the force on Q is directed radially, radially away from Q. So that kind of tells us that Q is going to be a positive charge. So the electric field is defined in terms of the force on a positive test charge. In particular, the electric field at any point in space is defined as the force exerted on that positively test charge at that point divided by the size of that test charge. So right there we have E equals F over Q. And you'll see here, this is very similar to gravity. With gravity, we have a field, too. And it's a force per unit of mass. We call that acceleration. So F equals MA. Here we have F equals QE. So the A is like acceleration, and the mass and, and charge are very similar as well. So, gravitational field, or acceleration due to gravity, force per mass. Electric field strength, force per charge. Q is so tiny that it exerts essentially no force on the other charge which created the field. 
from this definition, we see that the electric field at any point in space is a vector whose direction is in the direction that it experiences a force. And it's a force per unit of charge. It's like over here, I could have had acceleration instead of being meters per second squared, newtons per kilogram. Newtons per coulomb is for electric field strength. The electric field at any point in space can be measured. For simple situations with one or several point charges, we can calculate E. Uh, for example, the electric field at a distance R from a single point charge would have a magnitude of. So force, remember with uh, the previous video, we have F is equal to K uh, Q1 times Q2 over R squared. Or I can just call it little q, big Q, as in over here. And of course, the, the, the charge on the, the positive test charge is that. So this becomes E equals K times Q over R squared, where Q is the big, um, the charge making the electric field. So we would use this if we wanted, if, if this thing is making the, the electric field, okay, and if I know how far out I am, I could figure out what the electric field would be out here. Oops, this is supposed to be a question mark there. So we use this if we want to see the, the item that's making the electric field. I use this when I want to know Okay, uh, I have this electric field being made by this larger charge. By my little positive test charge, what's the f electric field exerted on and out there? If I know the force that it's experiencing, and if I know its charge, what's E going to be? Whereas over here, what's E going to be a certain distance from this big charge Q? So two separate formulas for two uh, different pieces of information. So if we were given the electric field E at the given point space, then we could calculate the force. This is valid even if Q is not small, as long as Q does not cause the charges creating the E to move. If Q is positive, F and E point in the same direction. If Q is negative, F and E would be opposite directions. So we have electric field pointing out, and it would be attracted to that if, the, if it in fact was negative. Okay, and we'll look at some examples dealing with that and specifically uh, some diagrams dealing with that. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples dealing with this. So we'll look at using the two different equations, see how they come into play here. So we'll look at elect, uh, electric field exerted on a single point charge. This should say electric field here. I'm not sure how I forgot that. So E equals F. So an electron is released in a uniform electric field and it experiences an electric force of this. Okay, so we have an electron and it's experiencing something. So it's experiencing an electric field because it has a force. And of course we know the charge on the electron and we're saying that it's, it's experiencing a force, a movement this way. So we so here we have the the test charge that is undergoing an effect in an electric field. So a couple of things. Uh, it's an electron, right? So we know its charge is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19, and we know the force. So if we look over here, we can figure out the force it's experiencing on an electron, and we get 9,363.23 newtons per coulomb, because this is newtons, this is coulombs, newtons per coulomb. I can run it off to three sig figs, 9,360, okay? So it's experiencing a force. Now, remember the direction, direction, E direction is determined by what happens to a positive 
charge. Okay, so the electric field is defined in terms of what happens to a positive charge. Now, if I have an electron that's wanting to move to the right, what would happen to a positive charge? If I have a negative charge wanting to move to the right, then a negative charge would be moving in the opposite direction. Because so we could assume that the negative wants to move in this direction because maybe there's something positive over here or something negative over here. So of course the positive would be would behave vice versa. So the electric field lines would be moving to the left because they correspond to what's happening to a positive charge. So if I know an, a negative is moving to the right, that means positive moves to the left. So the electric field direction is directed to the left. So that's kind of a tricky one there right off the bat because I'm giving you information about what happens to a negative charge as opposed to a positive charge. All right, we'll come back in the next video and look at the next example dealing with the other equation.